Hey folks, uh, thanks for tuning in. Sorry it's been a while since I've made another video. Uh, I have tons of footage um, of the Z1R and then I've got another project um, which would be fun to watch. It's another bike and then um, that should only be a two-parter and then I have a Mustang video. Um, I've got all this video footage and Video editing is so effing boring, I'm sorry, but it is. Uh, but also I went on vacation to Florida with the family, summer vacation, that was a couple weeks ago. Um, and anyway, enough with the excuses. So, uh, yeah, watch this video. Thanks. All right, so the right hand control contains a little, I don't know, space, whatever, for the throttle. And the two throttle cables, push and pull, go in here and attach to the throttle. <clears throat> and it spins around in there on the handlebar. Uh, I've got the grips here. This grip is for this one. And this grip is for the other one. Uh, let's see if I can get the throttle together. So let's see here. Okay, so this is missing a screw. Great. How am I going to find that? I'm going to put one screw in here. Great. <clears throat> okay, I have to find screws for this. So, yeah, on the uh, aggravation scale, Taking the handlebars off because the left hand control has to be threaded through here. You know, this should take two seconds. The brand spanking new bolts gets caught and breaks off. And it's a special bolt. <clears throat> so now I've got to go back to the place where I bought these bolts where this just snapped the fuck off and probably pay whatever it is, $30, $40 for another set of four bolts. On top of that, I have to get this out of here. And it's not going to just come out. <laughs> Alright, well, I took the triple tree right off of it because uh, this is not a great option of working on this over there. I don't want to get metal shavings all over the bike. Uh, again, this is a kind of a <laughs> beautiful uh, broken bolt to do that nut, weld on a nut thing. And I have a $1,100 welder, which I bought. <clears throat> uh, for a different project that I did some work on, which I haven't shown yet. Um, but... I'm still too much of a coward to try and hit this with a welder. So it goes right, you can get access to the bolt right to the back. Let's see how much I'm working with. So I'm going to put the broken one. I'm not sure why it's not focusing. Uh, in any case, that gives you. It's about uh, half an inch. <clears throat> so 
so I think what I'm going to do is drill through the back of it and maybe the heat will make it uh, move. Maybe I could maybe I could take a whiz wheel on the uh, Dremel and carve a, a slot in it to use a screwdriver and use the screwdriver and back it out this side. <clears throat> I mean, I'm looking in the threads and I see powder coat. So would I be able to even get through the powder coat? I don't know. Probably not. Think about how I'm going to do that. pretty much up to my standard, not in the center. <clears throat> I don't think I'm capable of doing drilling or grinding things properly. That's about a 2% chance of working, I think. I think it's just bending it. So that's not going to work. Drill it. Right, it came through. I don't know why this doesn't uh, focus. Anyway, it looks like it's reasonably on center. So this is what I have. I might be able to take it out a little bit bigger, but it's getting close to the threads over here. So I never, ever, ever have any luck with easy outs. They always break off or one time it cracked um, like I was putting it 
into something like this, yeah, like this this scenario here, and uh, and I turned it and it like cracked the the boss that the uh, thread existed in. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and even though I've never had any luck with it, try one again. like something broke but I think that was just the outside part so I'm not super sure what to do um, there's not a lot of it left I don't want to screw up the threads I don't think this is going to work because whatever it was caught on that caused it to snap that still exists yeah that doesn't work <coughs> useless chip this away okay that fell off how about like this Come off. <clears throat> if I could get it to go, maybe I can go out one more. see it but right here so I drilled it out as much as I dare I'm coming in from the back side with the correct tap for your bolt which is 8 millimeter by 1.25 thread pitch <clears throat> I'm trying to just slowly tap out what's left which I think just started to turn this okay there we go there's some of the threads and a bunch of goop something so trivial you know like Taking the handlebars on and off <laughs> turns into this. Why? Because the. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I swear that I tapped uh, this stuff. Yeah, maybe I didn't. Maybe I just hammered the bolt in with the impact driver. I don't know. So the whole point of taking the handlebars off was to put this top half of a controller on there. As you can see, it's got a big beefy wire. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, this one has to be threaded through the handlebar. Unlike, for instance, this one, which hangs underneath the handlebar. <clears throat> so, this can be quite frustrating, even though it's only about a foot I've got a piece of wire that I threaded through here.
put a glove on that wire is hurting my hand. All right, so that's, that's how that's supposed to go. Beat the hell out of that. Putting it in. I don't know if there's a proper way to do it. But that's that. That's what I was up to. So now I can put it back on. Lube on there. Okay, let's see. Okay, I don't want to do that. <clears throat> These are not the forty dollar reproduction ones. These are the, uh, well, the bo all I had was the bottom piece, and the guy rebuilt the whole thing, so it was more like 150 bucks per hand control, 175 maybe, I think I paid him 350 Again, wasting my money, but... Uh, <clears throat> well, I'm not sure about the routing on the throttle cable, but I don't have to decide this second. Okay, one step closer. What's next? Uh, plug wires, I think. All right, so I'm gonna make the plug wires um, brand new, real NGK uh, plug caps. Those were a good amount of money, but I would have paid for those just out of curiosity. And. <laughs> <clears throat> no prices. Anyway, um, so on one side, the NGK side, it's a screw. The screw screws into this uh, kind of like plastic material. Um, and then on the other side, it's one of these, I don't know what you call that, uh, nub or whatever, but uh, you expose some of the inner core bend it to the side and then you press these prong things in again I don't know if there's a tool for this well there's no tool but one thing I should put on is this boot
loose. Uh, so what do I do? <clears throat> I think this spreads apart. So I'll try that. I don't even know if this is the right is the right mounting, but uh, right routing of the cable. So I've got these little tiny things. That the stock spark plug wires may or may not have. <clears throat> I don't know. It just seemed like they'd be kind of neat to have these. Do that three more times. All right, I think I got that done. One, two, <clears throat> three, four. One, one and four are on the left coil, and two and three are on the right coil. Have not wired anything in yet, <clears throat> but just putting the coils in place. All right, I think next I'm going to try and get carbs in. All right. So here is the real part of the performance upgrade. Cooney flat slides. I believe these have been around for quite a while. Um, I got these from Redline Cycle, Jim at Redline Cycle. <clears throat> Here they are in their awesomeness. I believe the original carbs on a Z1R are 28 millimeter. Um, I could be wrong. <clears throat> These are 34 millimeter. And I guess I should probably take a look at the instructions a bit. So they're not just right out of the package, even though they look like they're just right out of the package. Um, they have been uh, modified by Redline Cycles. I told them what I was doing. Uh, KZ-1000 with a 1075 Wiseco kit in it, and he seemed to know just how to jet it. He's done hundreds of these, I believe. Um, so he knows, how, he knows what he's doing. And I think the only thing that I am curious about is Where do like the cables and the fuel lines? How does that setup supposed to work? It looks like it's set up to have two fuel lines, if I remember. Yeah, and then I bought the uh, I bought a Pingle fuel tap from him. This is like a hundred or more than a hundred dollars on reserve off. Um, the original KZ-1000s, although I'm not sure about the Z1R, the original KZ-1000s had a vacuum driven um, <laughs> uh, vacuum driven fuel peacock, excuse me. And uh, you have to make a, you know, you have to have a vacuum knockoff for that. 
and people didn't get to hear what I like them. <clears throat> um, a lot of people upgrade to this. There, there is a T fitting. I believe that it's uh, you know up, up, over, up, something like that. Uh, <clears throat> and he brought me a fuel line. <clears throat> But of course, I don't have a gas tank, so I don't really know what goes where. I think all I'm going to do really is just um, take a look, see in here, and kind of just put them, put the carbs in place. I got these APE filters. They're k and knockoffs. The, re the actual k and filters from this guy, I think he wanted 200 bucks. Hopefully these fit. Yes, these fit. Okay, good. So I think I'll just kind of like basically just mock it up. I'll just uh, put everything kind of in place, but I'm not going to commit to putting the fuel lines on um, yet. Okay, okay. All right, well, I got them in place. Stock throttle cables worked just fine, as the guy told me they would. It's full throttle. Seems to work. And again, I'm just gonna <coughs> stick the air cleaners on there for mock-up purposes. Okay, well, uh, about uh, the last piece of the puzzle mechanically is the electrical system. Probably should just freehand this. So. <clears throat> so this is the original wiring harness, and it, uh, it's totally salvageable. Looks like a fuse box, yeah. Flasher. Somebody has looped in a fuse there. Not sure what that is. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I decided a while ago that I would not use it and I would try to use this, which is a reproduction. So I think what I'll do is kind of compare the different uh, harnesses. So I can see that's the light. And then it has these kind of funny connectors on it. I think there's some, there's some bracket that's supposed to hang in the back of the, or the front, whichever way you look at it, uh, hang down here that those go into and you plug like the hand controls into them maybe, I don't know. So that's a 9 pin. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> so what is there for electronics on it? Or electrics? Alright, so you get your standard parking light, tail light, you get your turn signals. I know this goes back here. <laughs> um, that's where the battery goes. This comes up from the um, magneto. 
and so there's an oil pressure and neutral um, <clears throat> wires in there and then there's three wires that are the for the magneto there would typically be a voltage regulator and a rectifier the rectifier turns the signal that comes out of this from I believe basically an AC signal because you've got a coil spinning inside a, a magnet spinning inside a coil that makes an AC signal the rectifier turns that into a DC signal at 12 volts and then you'd have separately a voltage regulator the rectifier is upstairs um, it looks like it would probably work it didn't look like it was in very good shape this is probably the um, voltage regulator the regulator regulates the output you know the, the amount of current that comes out of the the uh, magneto is uh, variable based on how fast the engines running so you need a voltage regulator to keep it in check so this guy is a modern replacement for the regulator and the rectifier. So it's a voltage regulator rectifier, rectifier regulator, and there's a little book in there. This comes from Rick's Electronics, which is not far away uh, from from me actually. Um, and I've met Rick, nice guy, and they they uh, have some really top quality parts for these old bikes. <coughs> So here's the here's the original positive battery cable. And here's the new one that I got. This is clearly not the same one. And here's the original negative cable. And you can see obviously that's not the right one either. It's very long. I think this might have been for Z1, the uh, KZ900, the original one. So I'll have to figure out what I'm going to use out of that. And like I said, I think step one is just, I'll just compare the different plugs on this one versus that one and see what, see what seems to go where. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of meandering, but, uh, so anyway, the entire cluster gauge was rebuilt by a guy who does that. This is he does that, a lot of that, a lot of this stuff um, as his hobby, and he does a fantastic job. Uh, so I know the entire cluster is all set. All the lights work, everything in it works. Um, the hand control. I think I explained it before at one point, but uh, the hand controls have been completely rebuilt. Same guy tested. So over here you have lights on and off, start button, kill switch, here's the ignition, I think that that's like emergency flasher or something like that. Left right turn signal. This is a switch that turns off the automatic turn signal cancel. Uh, the turn signal cancel, if you see this big thing here, <laughs> that's actually a motor. And there's a little module, which I, I did, this bike didn't have it, but I bought one. This module is linked to this little doohickey on the speedometer cable. And so, Depending upon your speed, that basically counts how far you've traveled. So you put your turn signal on, and then that counts how far you've traveled, and this little module will send the signal to shut off the uh, turn signal. How does it shut off the turn signal? It does it with this little motor. There's a little motor in here, and that will physically take... You're, you have it in right hand turn mode and that, that will physically turn it off. And then there's high and low on the headlight and horn. 
and pass. Uh, it doesn't look like this one really has it. <clears throat> but uh, that's like a flash of the high beams. So, so I'll have to figure out how does that get hooked up. This is this goes down to the plate that's in the uh, that I installed the pickup, the electronic ignition. That looks like a that's for the starter. <clears throat> Hand controls, I think this is the right hand control, or the left, I'm not sure. <coughs> anyway, so I've got a bunch of things to figure out. Uh, I'm not going to sh show much of this because it's very boring to watch electrical work. Um, my first goal will be to hook up, get the main harness in place, and then hook up the battery, and get power to the ignition, so that when you go like that the neutral light comes on and the oil light comes on and then probably try to get some of the lights to work the stoplight front and uh, foot pedal right front and rear stoplights parking light turn signals maybe the headlight the headlight's still sitting over there I took it off three months ago so I could get, get access to in here. Uh, yeah, so I kind of like I'll I'll work through it, and as things anger me and don't work, I'll kind of like check in. Well, about three hours into it, <clears throat> I have it roughly in place. Um, got the battery hooked up, and I've got. My fuse box in. There's a little mini fuse box for the amp meter. Um, this is that little bracket I painted. I had to install these things incorrectly, these plugs. Um, so I had to refigure that out. <clears throat> this one and this one have to do with the this is the voltage regulator and this is the um, rectifier. So I can leave those out for now <clears throat> while I figure out what to do with that later. Um, so I have tw um, power going through the 20 amp main fuse up to the switch and my goal is to turn the switch on park and have this light come on. Uh, but I haven't got there yet. <laughs> um, currently there are these two um, nine pin connectors. These are the male connectors. They feed most of the cluster or all of the cluster, looks like. Um, and <clears throat> what was on the harness, the uh, original harness was this. It is a you know similar kind of nine pin connector, but not the same, but this one the, the ones on the original harness match the ones on the uh, cluster gauge, which makes sense. But the one on the replacement harness is this type. And you can see it has these little ears, and it doesn't have any provision for a, a locking tab. <clears throat> and so those ears are a non-starter. So I'm having to swap out two of those 18 pins all together, and I have to get all of these pins in here in the correct place. So I think I have that one recorded properly. Now well, you can see. <clears throat> So let's see, on the bottom it is orange. Black yellow.
next row, orange with green. There's these little tiny <coughs> uh, pieces of metal tab that pushes up and that's what locks it into place. When you take them out, you have to push that down with these kind of little tools here. <coughs> Which is what I just did, but then you have to put the, the tang back up. Doing. I'm taking these wires and individually feeding them into these little holes. It's been about four hours. Um, it took took probably 45 minutes to change those two 9-pin connectors. Some of the little prongs didn't want to go back in. It was a real pain in the neck. Anyway, when you turn it on, it is supposed to have the oil and the neutral switch on. <clears throat> haven't got tail light yet. Haven't got any signals or anything. So I will keep plugging away. All right, well, I've made a lot, uh, a lot of progress. <laughs> About five and a half hours of fiddling. There's one, well, there's two control modules on this. The Kawasaki Reserve Lighting Device, which is supposed to, supposed to give some kind of backup uh, circuit for something, some kind of light. <laughs> I don't know, um, but of course it has a problem. Um, so anything, anyway, you turn it on, the lights, high beam, got the marker lights, hazards, left turn signal, Right turn signal. And brake light. And brake light. Um, but no tail light. So, and also that little headlamp was on earlier. It is not on right now. So I think you could leave it on the side of the road with the flashers on. I think that what that is for. should be on. I don't know why that's not on. Uh, start button. You have to pull the clutch in. <laughs> uh, you also have to turn the kill switch on. So it turns over. So, good amount of progress. I think I will eliminate this. I think you can eliminate this by making a jumper in here and it it's not needed and uh, so I don't have a tail light and that's because of this I believe um, <clears throat> this is the gas tank sending unit right here I have a brand new sending unit upstairs I could plug it in and see whether or not the fuel gauge works all of this stuff should work I paid good money quite a bit of money to have this uh, all this stuff rebuilt 
so where am I? So didn't do anything with the ignition, didn't do anything with the regulator uh, rectifier. So I think that's it for today. July 4th, 520. Let me go relax. And uh, I think the next thing will be to figure out what's going on with this. Get rid of it, hopefully. And, and then work on the uh, getting the ignition to work. I believe the ignition is here. Um, so it's going to be a combination of wiring wiring in the new coils and the dyno what you call it um, I think basically we need switched 12 volts on this red wire and then one of these go to each of the coils and then I think basically uh, who knows <laughs> I'll look it up when I get there you know, I thought the horn was okay. But it, that's what it sounds like. So I got a new horn. And hopefully this will just bolt right in. All right, let's see how the new horn sounds. Looks like a horn to me. All right, well, I've figured out the right sequence of jumping to get around that uh, Kawasaki Reserve Lighting System. Basically, uh, one jump from here to here will give me a parking light. Uh, excuse me, that's, this is for the brake light. Um, I know I showed the brake light working, but that was with the module plugged in, so it needs to go through here. <clears throat> and then uh, this is for the headlight. And I need another wire off of here to go into the little connector that's over there um, for the parking tail light. So one is like a three-way and one is just a jumper. So let's see here. This side and this side, so the one in the middle on each side. Okay, so that means that one is in. That one looks a little twisted. Okay. Probably use a little bit too thick of a gauge of wire. So there's that one. And now the other one. Let me just go double check it. <clears throat> right, so the female part, it's these two, which means it's, if I look at it this way, it's this one and this one. And so, let's see how these go. Click. Click. Okay, all right, so those are in there. This one, goes in the bottom right here. Click, okay. 
All right, so. All right, so this one goes like this. This one goes like that. Now. Yeah, watch it melt when I turn it on. All right, so let's see. Headlight, parking lamps. Haha. Tail light is on. And brake light. Yes. All right. Okay, so good. I think that's done. And I looked at, so there's some kind of resistor that I was supposed to have with the control module and I don't have it and I didn't know I needed it. Maybe that's why, maybe that's why the control module didn't work because maybe like it blew up. But I don't need that. That's for the resistor thing. Just kind of pretend that isn't there. And then this one is the ignition. So I need to figure out what I need to hook between this. So I think this is the ignition and then I should actually have spark once I hook that up. So I think I figured out what needs to be plugged where for the Dynatech ignition to work. I'm picking up some jumpers. Let's see if you can see. Spark. Ah! <laughs> Zap the shit out of myself. Ow. Yeah, turn it off before you touch the plug. <laughs> Hello. All right, so I got spark. So now the last thing I have to deal with is the regulator rectifier. I think I will do that tomorrow because it is five o'clock. Good night. The last electrical component is the voltage regulator rectifier. So this modern unit replaces two different ones, two different old components. And there was a mounting location that fits perfectly right here. So it's a big thick wire that goes across here. <clears throat> and comes out on this side and is in a pretty good location to plug into these ones here and I think one also has to go in here which is the primary battery voltage <clears throat> I think um, so it says Attach the three yellow regulator wires to the three stator wires. There is no sequence. Attach two red wires to battery positive. Attach two green wires to negative or battery negative or good chassis ground. So the two units being replaced are this, this one here, which is the, the uh, regulator, and this is the rectifier. Okay. <laughs> so one of them, so these line up with the stator wires and that pink, blue, and yellow right there, that's the stator wires. On this blue one, those are the stator wires coming from the actual stator. So they jump over to the green one and they jump over to the white one. So the regulator, I mean the rectifier gets the uh, stator signal and it puts it into, uh, the output is this 12 volt right here, which normally would plug in right there.
here. <coughs> and it would have a chassis ground on it. I don't know if it's any good, I don't care, so I'll use the new one. So, what I have to do is, I think I'm going to take these plugs apart and make the new one, the new uh, regulator rectifier, plug into these two on here and one over here. So, I'm going to make up some wires. So this is what I ended up with. I reused the green terminal and the three stator wires go there. These two green ones go into a ground and this goes into the battery positive. So that should work. Okay, uh, it's filled with oil, it's not dripping yet. I installed this oil pressure gauge, which came off of that bike, and actually this is the second gauge. It's a very cheap gauge, and they say cut this little thing, and then when you cut this little thing, it leaks oil out of that little thing, and you'll have a little puddle of oil under your bike after you go for a ride. So I took it back off. Ah, but uh, for this one, we'll see if it can build up oil pressure. Don't really have a good way to know that it's pumped oil up into the camshaft area other than to say, okay, if it's uh, building pressure, then it must have gotten up there. So I took the plugs out, ignition is unplugged, and all I want to do is just spin it over. Uh, oh, I have to... Let's see, what can I do? I have to hold the clutch in. things going on here. This is wobbling back and forth, which I find odd. <clears throat> you wouldn't think that would be bent, but uh, the most troubling thing is it's not building any oil pressure. And not even the light. That red light, that's not going out. Looking at the oil, the oil window, you can see it's down here. Let's see, we'll focus. So the oil was up here, and now it's down here. <coughs> I would think it has plenty of oil in it to be pumping. <clears throat> so I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you see how the neutral light's on? The oil light is off. 
Well, I haven't put it in first gear. And watch what happens when I put it in neutral. The oil light comes on. So, somebody has miswired that. And so I was looking, when I was spinning it, I was looking for the oil light to go out. The neutral light went out. <laughs> so I feel better that it is building some pressure. But now I have to go figure out what's wrong with that. So when I was cranking it over, I noticed that the points advancer, spark advancer, looked wobbly. Let's see if you can see it here. So I think that it's, this may have bent. Maybe, possibly as a result of me messing with it when I took it apart. I think this is the one that I took off. But anyway, I don't think that's going to be good. It certainly looks bent when I look at it. So, I need to find another one of these. Alright, well, I have another one. It's all kinds of rusty. So I'll try sandblasting it, see what happens. Well, this one, I, this is the rusty one that I just cleaned up. I don't think it's for this bike. Um, it looks very, very similar, but... You see how this has... 2, 3, T, F, and then there's lines right here. So the top dead center, fire, and then the advance mark for 2-3. And then you get the same thing on 1-4. I don't know if you guys can see it. Is it focusing? Well, you have to trust me. <laughs> uh, this is the 1-4. There's a T, F. T is top dead center. F is fire. <clears throat> and over here is the... Uh, high speed advance. So like when these go out, um, just doesn't have the same marks on it. So I have two other KZ1000 engines, 77 and a 78, and I robbed one from that, from one of them, and I'll have to find a good one somewhere. Hey, well, thanks for watching the video. Um, yeah, these past few videos have been like tedious. It's like all this little crap. Um, but this is what they say about like a full restoration. There's all these like little things. And they take time. And, um, but I figured people would want to see it, you know. Um, you know, the elect like installing the electrical system, right? If you didn't do, if you're just fixing the engine and just putting the engine back in, you don't have to do all this other stuff to the bike. It, that's no problem, you know, not, not as big of a deal. But this is like, you know, not only my engine, I mean, like the whole thing, right? The whole bike is being <laughs> restored. It costs quite a bit of money. Um, but hey, that's what I signed up for. Um, so what am I trying to say? Yeah, so what did we do? We did the electronics, ele electrical system, uh, the hand controls. I drove myself crazy by snapping a bolt off on the handlebars. Oh, that effing sucked. Um... Yeah, so, yes, so I wanted to, make, yeah, so I put some pictures on Facebook on one of the um, uh, groups there after I got the paint set back, put the paint set on the bike, and it looks, you know, I have video of you know, me doing that, but I haven't put it out yet, of course, but I put some pictures saying, hey, this is basically what it looks like, and someone was saying that they had a problem with their rear brake with the Tarazi rear set. I am having a problem with the rear brake with the Tarazi rear set. I am very disappointed in that Tarazi rear set. Um, so I will do a, uh, I will try to do a little video just on that, on what's wrong with it. And I haven't uh, come up with a solution that I ran into that, I think six weeks ago. And um, like I have no rear brake. So uh, I have to figure out a solution to that. 
and I haven't figured out a solution, so I can't really make a video of me, you know, showing the problem and, and how to fix it, because I haven't figured out how to fix it. So anyway, um, enough of me babbling. Thank you for watching the video, and uh, I think I think in the future I'm going to try to do some more interspersed, like, multi I have projects going on in parallel, and try to show, you know, even though I'm not done with this UNR, do some other videos so there's variety. I'm kind of like sick of working on this UNR and only working on this UNR. I want to get it off the stand. It's still on the stand right there. And like a lot of other stuff I want to do. Maybe I'll give like a project update. I think I counted up the projects I have. I think there's like 12 projects. And there's only one of me. And I only work on this stuff on the weekend. So it's, it's going to take a while. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Thank you for watching. See ya.